We have a canoe video here of a paddler who's been off the water for a few weeks, but she's coming back ready to go. And even if she doesn't have the most pristine technique that she usually has, this is going to show us what she's going to revert back to when she's tired. This is her base technique level when she's kind of wonky. Um, and, and it's going to show us some really cool things that we can be watching for in other paddlers. I'll play the video and then we're going to slow it down. All right, so what I really like about this paddler is the rhythm that she has. She's able to apply a lot of power and then get it out. She doesn't really deepen her paddle too much in the water. What I mean by that is her blade is in the water and that's it usually. And I love that. We don't need to make the paddle go any deeper than just the blade. That's sufficient paddling. So what I'd like to focus on is uh, what we're doing to get to the water. If we're in our setup and we have a good setup, how do we get to the water and maintain a really good reach and stay connected? And um, among other things, I might I might mention some other things. So I'm going to play this in slow motion. So we can really see everything broken down. The last canoe video, we talked about sequence of events, and we have a little bit of that going on here. I would like her to clean that up a little bit. Um, it's not too bad. What I want you to start watching right now is from setup to catch. What is she doing? Let's look at our setup. And how does she get to her catch? What mechanisms are happening? All right. So we have our setup. Pretty good rotation. I see a bit of her back. I like that. Her hips look pretty far forward. We can always, as paddlers, be trying to get more rotation. So no one is ever perfect. But I like how uh, her knee is right over the heel of her foot. So she has really good extension. Her top arm looks like it's pretty straight. Her face is forward. Her bottom arm... I know this paddler, and I know she can make it straighter. I know that she could do... A good old straight line here, but already she's really uh, flexing her bicep, keeping it a little bit more bent than I would want. And then we really see it right here. This is her buried, and already her bicep is pretty bent. Pretty bent. Not 90 degrees yet, but something that's eliminating quite a bit of reach. So this is her fully buried um, she could probably, if she had straightened her arm, she would probably be more out there. And then her A-frame would be pretty fat, which is a good thing, having a fat A-frame. So that's the first thing I'd like this paddler to focus on, is making her shoulder girdle. So from her left hand all the way to her right hand, what's happening in between there, her, her shoulders, I would like that to be more independent from what's happening with her legs. Not disconnected, but independent. And so we're gonna talk about what I mean by that. Um, right here, I would like to see her arms starting to do the press down so that her body could independently come up. So if her, if both of her arm or her hands started pressing down this way, and then she was independent from her body, then her body could start coming up this way. But instead, what we see is everything going down together. Right here, she starts. her body starts coming up, but look at where her paddle is. Look at how negative that is, how she's dragging, she's... She's lost a lot of potential momentum by keeping her hips back here. She should have her hips right here if she were um, having proper sequence of events. So um, the reason why 
we're talking about independent versus dependent is for that reason. So her hands would go down here so that her, or I mean right here because her blade is buried here. Her hands would go down here and then her chest would come up. So independent versus dependent is uh, pretty important. Not disconnected. I want everything to stay connected, of course. So another way we can look at this is watch her hips. What happens when she buries her blade? Not only does her arm bend backward, but so do her hips. Her hips just go back and everything just goes back together. But instead, what I would have wanted to see is from here, from our setup, you to see her angle from the knee open up here. I would like to see that get greater. Oh, I don't know what I'm doing. How do I undo that? There we go. And so from the setup, I would like to see this happening. Oh, my liver. I don't know how to undo this. I'd like to see it open up this way. But instead, what we're going to see is her hips break. So here, her knee is doing its job. See how she's back here? And then her knee opens. Great. But now, the last little bit, she just needs to hang on a little bit longer, a little bit more patience. And instead of breaking here at the hip, instead of that, I would like to see her opening up her knee angle and then we would have a straight arm everything just long and then when she presses up her arms can be independent so that's what i'd have this paddler focus on i hope that makes sense i know that independent and dependent are new terms and everything so staying connected but independent